Chairing your ICS committee. Tips for success. This educational module is part of ICS commitment to faculty development and is designed to help committee chairs in their role for ICS. The most important roles for the chair of any committee are to align the purpose of the committee with ICS aims and strategy, to create an atmosphere of trust, openness and professionalism within the group and to steer the committee through its business. This module provides guidance to committee chairs on managing meetings for ICS, but it's equally useful in any scenario where an ICS member may be in the position of managing a committee as chair. As in all things, preparation counts. Think about the value of the meeting and how you're going to spend the time. Plan the agenda with the help of the ICS office and call for agenda items from the members of the committee. This serves two purposes. It ensures that you don't forget stuff and also engages the group early, ensuring that members with things to say are able to do so. If people are given responsibility for things, then they'll take ownership for them. Try to categorise your agenda items into those which are for information versus those that are for discussion or decision and will therefore need action. To ensure that all committee members participate in the meeting, make sure that relevant papers are sent out in good time. Reach out to new members and orientate them to the current work of the committee and its mission. More preparation. Make sure that you're well briefed on all of the agenda items and are able to present the previous business and action items in context. At the start of the meeting, make sure that everyone is orientated to the purpose and mission of the meeting. Welcome new members to the meeting. Allow them to introduce themselves and their interests. Then ask existing members to do the same. You might like the, uh, to ask the office to provide name labels. Receive any apologies for absence. Outline the rules of fair play for the meeting, including cell phones. You might like all questions and discussion to be directed through the chair, but this is less common these days. Try to ensure that everyone feels equally able to express themselves, although it takes time to build a trusting group. Check for any members' conflicts of interest with items on the agenda. Formally approve the minutes of the previous meeting and the agenda, recording any amendments to be made. Set the scene for each agenda item, outline the business and the objective of the committee. If required, describe the nature of the decision to be made. You could consider giving each member a specific role, such as timekeeper or minute taker, if no ICS office member is present. Some chairs might like to consider giving the role of something like tangent buster. This stops tangents but records the train of thought for later discussion and keeps things on track. You need to maintain control as the chair and set any time limits should these be needed to move business on. You should though allow flexibility and ensure openness, openness of expression. Stick to the agenda and remind members that additional items can be discussed under any other business should time allow. You should do your best to ensure time is used effectively and that clear minutes are being kept. Read back what is recorded should this be needed. During the meeting, it's your job to make sure there's full member participation. Draw out contributions from quieter members of the committee. Although soliciting input is usually not helpful, you should not oblige anyone to participate who is finding doing so difficult. Ensure that no member continually dominates the meeting or discussion and be prepared to draw attention to the matters that no one else will. Be the one to ask the awkward question. The more difficult agenda items should be first so as to avoid running out of time. The earlier items, regardless of their nature, always seem to consume the most time. Ensure that everyone understands what is being discussed, particularly important for non-native English speakers. Ensure that all jargon and terminology is explained so that everybody understands. Weigh up the contributions of members impartially. It's more important for one to be heard than to have everyone agree with your opinion. All points in favour of a point should be weighed against all points against. Don't leave anything out and try to remain impartial and objective. Use your team members' expertise. In preparation, you should know the skills of your team 
and engage their strengths and interests. Allow members to take the lead in updating the committee on their actions or projects upon which the committee is engaged. Remember, both introduce and thank any invited guests who arrive to present to the committee before discussing the implications of their presentation to the work of the committee. When it comes to deciding upon any item, ensure you have a recorded proposer and seconder of any motion. Allow reasonable time for discussion on the motion before it goes to the vote. Make sure you record each member's vote and the names of any abstaining members. Members can decide to release their names in publicly available minutes should the decision have been contentious. Make sure that all action items along with their timeline and who is responsible for implementation is recorded. At the end of the meeting, summarise the decisions taken. Remind members of the action points, the timeline for implementation and who is responsible for each. Agree the date for the next meeting, although this is usually done by the ICS office at a later date. Note any outstanding items which need to be carried over to the next meeting. Thank everyone present for their participation. And finally, as the ICS is by its nature an international organisation, meetings often need to be held online via WebEx or teleconference. Virtual meetings present different challenges for chairs. This last section considers efficient running of these meetings. The first thing to do before the meeting is to check that the technology works. This is an addition to all of the usual committee-related preparatory work. Ideally, you should ensure that the office sends out the link to the meeting around an hour before it's held, as a number of attendees will either have either ignored or forgotten how to gain access. In virtual meetings, civility and respect must be the norm. There have to be inalienable ethical rules that you follow before and during a virtual meeting for it to be truly successful. That means adhering to two fundamental principles. Firstly, be respectful of others' time. Secondly, be present and attentive to the meeting. It's easy to be diverted when other committee members are not physically present and the Chair should make sure that all members are engaged and active. In order to do this, try to ban multitasking. This detracts from meeting productivity and isn't effective for any job that members are trying to accomplish, whether that be related to the work in the committee or work they're trying to do on the side. One way of doing this is to use a video rather than teleconference. This can essentially eliminate multitasking because your colleagues can see you. Call on people to share their thoughts. Since no one likes to be caught off guard, they'll be more likely to pay attention. Give people different tasks in the meeting and rotate them regularly. To keep people engaged, have a different team member track action items, owners and deadlines. Thank you for watching. <laughs>